Hi, in this video, let's look at some algebra techniques that you may find necessary when you are manipulating some of these algebraic expressions. You're going to find these expressions within limits of functions inside of the calculus course. So let's review some of the algebra that we learned, and hopefully when you look at this, maybe the idea that this is a difference of cubes comes out to mind. And maybe you have that formula memorized. Maybe not. Let's just go ahead and see. And then in the denominator, we see that we have a quadratic trinomial. So our highest power is x squared, and we have three terms, which makes it that trinomial. So we need to make sure we look at these as factors. Now, if you have the difference of cubes memorized, then you will recognize this to be I am cubing 4x, and I am cubing Five. That's where we get that difference of cubes idea from. So I can right away look at this as what I'm cubing and what I'm cubing. And then it's square. So I square the 4 and the x. I multiply those two together. So 4x times 5 gives me 20x. And then I square. So it was square, multiply square. And then the signs spelled Soap. So it's same, same as what you have. I have a difference, so it's still the difference. Opposite, or O, so plus, and always positive. So that gave me my positives and negatives. So if you know how to factor that based on, you know, that formula for a difference of cubes, then you are done. If you don't, that's fine too. Most of us can at least remember that it's a difference of cubes, and so you can think of what you're cubing and what you're cubing. So another way that you can do this is you can figure out what that zero would be, 4x minus 5 equaling zero, gives you an answer of 5 fourths. And you could come off to the side and look at synthetic division, where we go 64x cubed, 0x squared, 0x, negative 125 would be my constant, remembering that synthetic division has to be perfect descending order, so don't forget those zeros right there. I will refresh your mind on synthetic division in the next problem. So I am here, and it's all over. Well, now I have to factor this denominator, and hopefully these problems are set up so that one of your factors will divide to 1. So I'm hopeful that this 4x minus 5 factor is going to match. So maybe that's one of my factors. So let's start with that. Well, then what would your other factor have to be? Well, the first two terms multiply to 4x squared. So my first term in that second binomial would have to be x because 4x times x gives me 4x squared. And then this second term of the second binomial would have to be minus 2, because again, they're multiplying to be that positive 10, so this negative 5 and this negative 2 would do that. And now we need to check to make sure that we get our middle term. I can check to make sure that I get this entire trinomial, really. Well, 4x times x gives me 4x squared. 4x times this negative 2 gives me negative 8x. The negative 5 times the x gives me a negative 5x, and that gives me negative 13x, so that's correct. And then we already said the negative 5 times the negative 2 gives me that positive 10. It is very important that you check your factors. So however you learn to factor, this is the same expression as what I have from the beginning. And I can kind of erase all this so we can see here. These should be equivalent, okay? Well, now the 4x minus 5 divided by 4x minus 5 divides out to 1. And so what I really have left is in my numerator 16x squared plus 20x plus 25 all over in my denominator x minus 2, okay? So one way to check that this is accurate is by using a graphing tool, your graphing calculator, or online Desmos. So let's take a look at that. 
Okay, so what I have graphed here in red is the first function, 6x cubed minus 125 all over 4x squared minus 13x plus 10. That is the first function that I called f. You'll notice g, the second function there, is now blue, and if you'll notice, it traced over that red graph, and that is just me putting that expression in factored form. It traced it perfectly. As you'll notice, I'm turning it on and off. It traces it perfectly. You'll notice the graph is turning from red to blue. It's because I'm turning on the second function. Now I'm going to turn on the third function, which is h of x, which is our simplified or rewritten expression after I divided the 4x minus 5s out, and that one will be green, and you'll notice that traces as well. So what you'll notice is if they're not equivalent, your graphs are not going to trace each other. The other way that you could do it is, of course, numeric. You could put a value in to your original expression, something like 3.91 for x, get a value for that whole thing, put in 3.91 for x, and at least you would know if it works for that one value, but chances are if you pick something random, it probably is good for most values or all values. All right, so let's do this again, and let's review synthetic division on this second one here. So just in case you did not remember your summer difference of cubes formulas, you can use synthetic division to help you. So in this numerator now, I have four terms, which we might find to be a little bit more difficult to factor. Some of us might remember factoring by grouping, where you can take a look at the first two and see if they have the same greatest common factor as the second two. But see, in the first two, I have, let's say, an x squared as a GCF, but in the last two terms, I just have a 1, and what's left over is not going to match. So if you remember at all factoring by grouping, I can kind of see that that is not going to be effective. But what I do hope is that this is here because I'm hoping that that 2x minus 1 as a factor divides into that numerator. And remember, it's kind of all or nothing. So if that's the case, I'm going to figure out, hey, where is 2x minus 1 equal to 0? And that is at x equals a half. So that is where the denominator, just as a function, would cross the x-axis if I just looked at 2x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 1 half. Okay, well, let's use synthetic division with 1 half. Let's see where this leads me. So I'm going to divide that out of my numerator. And again, I'm using synthetic division to then work backwards and put this in factored form. So you may not have done this before. So this will be a 2x cubed, so a 2, 5x squared, so 5, positive 1x, and then minus 2. And remember, this has to be perfect descending order. So if you skipped a power of x, you must have a 0 for that coefficient. Okay, now here's how synthetic division worked. It's fake division. So yes, you're kind of dividing this factor of 2x minus 1 in, sort of. But we don't actually use division and subtraction. We use multiplication and addition. So I'm going to carry down this 2, carry down your first number, and then this is your multiplier. So whatever comes down here gets multiplied by that half. So 2 times a half is 1, put it under that next number, and add down. 5 plus 1 is 6. So now I start over. 6 times a half is 3. Add down. 1 plus 3 is 4. Then I start over, 4 times a half is 2, and hopefully you get that remainder of 0, which means it divided in evenly. So there are a couple different ways that you can look at this in factored form. It really was x minus 1 half times, here's your leftover polynomial. Well, if 4 is your constant, then 6 would be your x, your coefficient of x, and 2 would be your coefficient of x squared. So it would be like 2x squared plus 6x, because it was positive, plus 4. 
That is one way of writing this in factored form. But see, I don't really want fractions like x minus a half because if I look at my denominator, I have 2x minus 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do is all of these three terms have a factor of 2. So I'm going to factor the 2 out and put it in that factor. So if I factor the 2 out of the second trinomial here, I get x squared plus 3x plus 2, and I'm going to put that factor of 2 in that x minus a half. 2 times x would be 2x, 2 times that half would be minus 1. So now I can rewrite that original that I was given in the numerator to be 2x minus 1 times the quantity x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over 2x minus 1, again, as a quantity. So now I can fully see that the 2x minus 1 factors divide out to 1. The other way to look at it is the difference between x minus 1 half and 2x minus 1 is a factor of 2. Um, so if you did want to divide something out, it might leave a factor of 2 somewhere, numerator or denominator, depending on where your, your factors are in the future. So my answer for this one is just literally the numerator is x squared plus 3x plus 2. The denominator is a 1, or I can actually factor that one step further. The quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 1. Either one of these are equivalent, and they would get you where you need to go for your calculus limit. And the last one is just taking a look at reminding us about natural log. So if I have natural log of some argument minus natural log of another argument, we had a property, natural log of A minus natural log of B, for example, was natural log of this quotient A over B. So that's all I'm going to do for this one is rewrite this to one natural log. And so that would be natural log of the positive natural log because this is like a minus 1 natural log. So natural log of the first term, 3x squared minus 7x plus 8, all over this argument down here, 5x squared plus x minus 1. The reason this works um, is because you had a property natural log of A plus natural log of B was natural log of the product AB. And so if we use natural log properties, this is really a coefficient of negative 1. And coefficients, so if I rewrite this here, coefficients of our natural log became exponents. So I could rewrite this as natural log of A plus natural log of B to the negative 1. And now I can see this as a product, A, B to the negative 1, and B to the negative 1 is the same thing as dividing by B to the first. So maybe you saw that in your college algebra course dealing with natural logs. Now I could try to factor this and see if this is going to go anywhere. But I can tell you right now that that denominator does not factor very well, so chances are nothing would divide to 1. But you can certainly test it out and try. Now that you remember factoring and or synthetic division, you might find that helpful. And one more just quick moment here, because I did touch on factoring by grouping. Um, and I'll remind you of how that is linked to our synthetic division. So let's just say I need to put this expression here into factored form. 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. What I was talking about earlier, factoring by grouping, is I'm going to just take a look at the first two, figure out its GCF of x squared, and then I have 2x minus 3 left. And then in the second grouping here, 
I have to make sure I deal with that negative in the middle. So I'm going to actually factor out a negative 1 because a 2 and a 3 just as a 1 as a GCF. And then that would be a positive 2x, because if you distribute the negatives, that'll make that negative 2x, and negative 3. And now what I can see is I really only have two terms. Here's the first, here's the second. They both have a GCF of 2x minus 3. And then what's left over, if I factor out the 2x minus 3, is this x squared and the minus 1. And I can factor the x squared minus 1 as well to x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 1. So this is in fully factored form. One other way that I could put that in factored form is let's say that I put this expression into Desmos or my graphing calculator and I look at where it crosses the x-axis. And those are all of my um, possible, I can also take a look at all my possible p over q's if you remember that from synthetic division. Um, or you could look, take a look at your graph and see if you can figure out where it crosses the x-axis. And I see, for example, it crosses the x-axis at x equals 1. So I can use synthetic division, 2x cubed, look at all your coefficients, negative 3x squared, negative 2x plus 3. So there's all my coefficients in perfect descending order. And here's synthetic division one more time. I'll carry down the 2. 1 is my multiplier. 2 times 1 is 2. So write that number down and add down. I get negative 1. Multiply. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add down. I get negative 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add down. You should get, again, 0 as a remainder. That means it divided in evenly. That means you were right. It crossed the x-axis at 1. So I already know one factor is x minus 1. Because again, if it crosses the x-axis at 1, then its factor would be x minus 1. And now I have a quadratic left, because you found one solution from a cubic polynomial. Now you're at the quadratic level, so if you wrote that out, that would be 2x squared minus 1x minus 3, for example. But you can continue on. And maybe now you see, ooh, negative 1 is also a good place where I think it crosses the x-axis. And you do synthetic division from what you have left. So carry down this first term. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Add down. Negative 1 plus this negative 2 is negative 3. Multiply, you get positive 3. Add down, you get 0. Again, you want 0 as a remainder. That means that negative 1 was an answer, or the factor would be x plus 1. And then, look, you have something linear left. You have 2x minus 3. So where is, that's your leftover factor. So I can say I have x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 1, times the quantity 2x minus 3. So I can see it kind of either way. These are the same things because, again, 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 3 is also 12. So changing the order of that in multiplication doesn't change your output. Hope this gives you a good reminder on some of the algebra that we will need as we're working within these calculus limits. Thanks for watching.